Introduction to Constraint-Induced Movement Therapy for People with Stroke This is an introduction to the original Constraint-Induced Movement Protocol developed by Dr. Edward Taub from the University of Alabama at Birmingham. The purpose of this introduction is to bring awareness to therapists and patients of its existence. Stroke, also known as cerebral vascular accident, is defined as the sudden death of some brain cells due to the lack of oxygen when the blood flow to the brain is impaired by blockage or rupture of an artery to the brain. Approximately 700,000 people survive a stroke every year, causing most to experience some form of debilitation. A common symptom of stroke is chronic hemiparesis, or the loss of voluntary movement or sensation on the opposite side of the body, causing a lack of control in those extremities of that side. Long-term treatment and therapy varies depending on the variety and severity of symptoms experienced. However, constraint-induced therapy is an innovative and highly researched method of therapy that facilitates stroke survivors to use their affected upper extremity. Constraint-induced therapy differs from most other rehab techniques by focusing on restoring function of the affected arm rather than compensating for the lost function. Constraint-induced therapy is an intense and strategic focus on the reuse of the more affected side by restraining the unaffected arm in patients with chronic stroke. Dr. Edward Taub, a professor of psychology at the University of Alabama, developed the CI therapy proposal in 1987. The idea of CI therapy was developed due to the initial unsuccessful use of the affected arm discourages the stroke survivor. Dr. Taub calls this behavior learned non-use. CI therapy is a behavioral intervention which relies on the natural flexibility, also known as plasticity, of the central nervous system to reorganize in order to function most efficiently. CI therapy is proven to increase motor functional movement and brain activity known as cortical reorganization of the affected side. To participate in CI therapy, the protocol requires that stroke survivors must be able to actively extend the wrist at least 20 degrees, actively extend the finger joints at least 10 degrees, and be cognitively intact to understand the process. Active extension means that the stroke survivor is able to move his wrist 20 degrees and fingers 10 degrees on his own with the power of his own muscles and without the assistance from an outside source. The first component involves the motor activation of the more affected arm and hand by participating in intense activities and training with the shaping method six hours a day for ten consecutive weekdays. The second component involves the restriction of the less affected arm for the full fourteen days of intervention. Training of the affected upper extremity is a method known as shaping. Shaping is the use of rewards, which are enthusiastic approval for mastery rather than punishment or blame for failure. Shaping is used to modify behavior. In this case, movement is behavior. The stroke survivor is approached with task to complete using the affected arm and hand, which eventually increase in difficulty. The movement complexity is increased by grading the task slightly higher than the current capability until it is achieved and rewarded with self and external approval. Strengths of CI therapy account for improvements in all activities of daily living and unplanned functions performed and recorded in a motor activity log. The increase in hand function may result in improved quality of life. The original protocol formed by Dr. Taub requires six hours per day for 10 days of intervention. This can be difficult for most therapists who are also responsible for several other clients. Modified CI therapy is an alternative to the original protocol of intervention to allow for a more realistic intervention schedule. One study showed significant improvements in the affected arm after practicing CI therapy for three hours per day for 20 days. Although the same amount of time of 60 hours was required, the intervention was distributed over twice the number of days, resulting in less effectiveness than the original protocol. The original requirements of active extension of the wrist 20 degrees and finger joints 10 degrees are not typical for many patients whom experience moderate to severe chronic hemiparesis. However, beneficial outcomes have been observed in studies which applied modified CI therapy to participants with much less active extension than the original criteria required. 
A study by Taubin Morris noted large improvements in 15 out of 16 patients who had minimum function to lift a wash rag off a tabletop using any type of prehension and release available. However, this study noted a significant limitation of motor ability was still evident after CI therapy. Another negative aspect of CI therapy that may be difficult to overcome by simply modifying the original protocol is the financial expense. At the present time, medical insurance does not compensate the client who receives CI therapy. CI therapy is expensive because it is so labor intensive for the treatment team. The average cost of CI therapy is approximately $5,000 for the full two weeks of treatment. However, a stroke client may participate in research studying advances in CI therapy at no cost to them. The University of Alabama at Birmingham Constraint Induced Therapy Research Group, led by founder Dr. Taub, has developed an educational program for physical and occupational therapists interested in becoming certified in CI therapy for upper extremity functional recovery. Therapists can receive training in CI therapy by attending an eight-hour continued education course. Upon completion of a CI therapy course, a registered occupational therapist will be able to master several CI objectives. This presentation is done in partial completion of the Master of Occupational Therapy program at Texas Women's University. Committee Chair is Dr. Avon, Committee Member Dr. Brown.